Hi everyone! Today we are going to be looking at Johanna Basford's brand new book, Worlds of Wonder. I was so, so excited to receive this package from Johanna's studio in Scotland just a couple of days ago and I thought I'd show you what was inside. It was so beautifully presented. Everything was wrapped in this gorgeous tissue paper that is adorned with Johanna's drawn leaves and I don't really know what I'm going to do with this but it's just too beautiful to throw away so it's definitely getting folded away, put in a drawer and maybe I'll use it again in the future. Um, but yeah, lovely. So the first thing that I noticed was this card that she'd put in. And it's in a beautiful envelope. I know an envelope is kind of a weird thing to gush over, but it's kind of like this translucent plasticky paper and it's just so extra. I loved it. Um, so this is the card that I got and it does have an illustration from the book on it, which is really sweet. And a little note from Joanna as well. So that was a nice inclusion there. The next thing that I came to was this. It's in a um, non-bendable cardboard envelope <laughs> and it's actually a print. It's been done all in gold foil and it's one of only 200 made and it's just lovely. This is going to be something that I'll treasure for years to come. It's just gorgeous. So again, another illustration from the book just finished in this gold embellishment. Beautiful. And then there was a box of pencils. So Johanna usually includes something for you to colour or draw with in the case of Inky Wonderlands when she sends out her book packages. And this is a tin of Castle Arts Botanical Collection pencils. So I do have the Castle Arts pencils. If you have seen my review of it, you'll know that I have the full set. But this is a specially curated set. So none of these pencils are new or separate colours from the original set of, I think, 120. But they have been sort of selected to work best for botanical colouring. So I'll just show you those quickly. So these are the colours. Lots of really nice ochres and browns and then a couple of quite bright jewel tones. But for the most part, a little muted. Then we'll just have a look at the pencils themselves. As you can see, I have been using them indeed on the Worlds of Wonder colouring book and I'll show you that page very soon. So have a look at my Castle Arts review if you don't know about these pencils. They are harder than Prismacolor, so they require a bit of a different technique if you're used to Prismas like me. You need to do lots of light layers, light pressure and build up the colour, but they are really, really nice to use and really saturated as well. So finally we have the book and I have the US version. I know this because of the purple circle on the front and the spelling of colouring there. So the book is exactly the same size, shape and format as Johanna's previous colouring books, not including Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. So if you have a Lost Ocean, Enchanted Forest, Magical Jungle, these are all uh, in the same square shape and size. So let's have a look inside. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the cover. Let's properly appreciate this cover. So you can see that we have some purple and some silver foiling on this. I believe that the UK edition will look slightly different. I know it doesn't have the purple circle, but it does have embellishments on it. And then on the back, it's a very similar thing with the circle in the middle, uh, but no foiling to the back. So you can colour this. You can colour all of it, actually and that would look really nice. For the most part, I like to leave the covers of the books as they are, monochrome. I have coloured, I think, Lost Ocean and Magical Jungle covers before, but I don't know, there's something about having just this little touch of colour and the rest of it being black and white. So just keeping in mind all the time that this is the US version, there might be some slight differences with the UK version. Um, I'm not sure whether Lucy from Colouring in the Midst of Madness will be doing her UK versus US comparison video, but if she does, I will link that below and you'll be able to see all of the tiny differences that she identifies between the two books. So first of all, we have a French flap. There's not a dust jacket. Dust jackets really annoy me because they slip off and it's just annoying. I like it when everything is in one piece. So we've got a French flap and as you can see, I'm going to pull this across a little bit, there is some little motifs drawn on this flap. Now, as Johanna mentioned in her video when she showed you the book in its entirety, this could easily be cut and made into a bookmark. The way that she's placed the illustrations down the centre of the fold means that you can cut it out and use it as a really pretty bookmark, either coloured or uncoloured. And then as we open the French flap, you'll see there are lots of motifs that have been put into this beautiful design. We've got palaces and fish and tree houses and circus tents, and it's all beautiful. 
So here's the title page, Worlds of Wonder, all ready for you to colour in. And then we have a cute little welcome heart. So this is made out of flowers. I've been actually practicing with a floral heart on my iPad. It's nowhere near as beautifully presented as Johanna's, but um, yeah, it's something that I've been practicing with. Really looking at the Inky Wonderlands book and trying to become a better drawer, artist. Um, so this is the book belongs to Crest and as you can see Johanna's written my name in there and put a little note let's go on an adventure then we have the introduction and a guide to exploring the world of wonders this is just Johanna's little tips and tricks to make colouring a little bit easier for you so colouring pencils are best rather than markers just because it's a double sided book and you don't know if it's going to bleed through bleed out of the lines obviously if you, that's the way you colour that's absolutely fine um, but Joanna does generally prefer pencils personally if you are tempted by ink be cautious bold explorer use color palette test pages at the back of the book to check if your ink will bleed through the paper so if we just flick quickly to the back you'll see i've already made use of it here we do have a color palette test page for you to test out any of your different mediums it says slip a sheet or two of blank paper between the page you're working on to prevent indentation or transfer of ink to the pages below Going outside the lines, adding your own embellishments and wandering off the page are all heartily encouraged. Don't remain in a world if your curiosity is calling you elsewhere. Turn the page and begin a new adventure so you can return to worlds anytime you wish. So it is like kind of going on a little travel. So you might be working on one page one day and then you're like, hmm, I want to try something else. I want to go somewhere else. And then you'll find another area to, uh, to explore. Share your worlds with like-minded adventurers, show friends, upload to a colouring gallery or share on social media with hashtag worlds of wonder. The adventure continues to unlock hidden pages and join the secret society of curious colourists. Visit johannabassford.com slash worlds of wonder, which I haven't actually done yet. So I'm going to have a look. Sorry if my pyjamas keep getting in on this, by the way. I love these pyjamas though. Just quickly have a look. They've got milk and cookies and they're bright pink and they're gorgeous. Anyway, so let's get back to the book. Um, the first illustrator, the first proper illustrations that we see in the book, apart from, you know, the, the first pages, uh, are these floating islands and they're so much fun. Let's have a look at each one of them. So first of all, we've got a little house and it's held to a balloon by a string. So it's just floating along happily. So on this island, we've got a lighthouse uh, we've got what looks like a lookout point and I really love this boat that's just sitting here offshore. It's got a gorgeous sail to it. It looks almost like a dragon wing. And then underneath the island, there's more going on. We've got extra houses down here. You can see that a bucket of water is being slowly let down to keep this beautiful whale uh, nice and wet. And also from the uh, top of the island, you can see there's some water flowing down as well. And on this side, there is a ladder that goes down to another island down here that has some tiny little flowers growing down from underneath. And you can see there's washing on the line. We've got smoke coming out of the chimney and it's all just so friendly and sweet and cute. I love it. So on this page, we've got more islands. These ones are detached though. So whereas this one is kind of like a little maybe village of floating islands, these are detached separate ones so we've got an island that purely has a lighthouse and a tree but the best thing about this is these tree roots and how they're kind of holding the bottom of the island together we've got some lanterns hanging off them as well and then here on this one it looks almost like a church or a chapel with a little house just off it as well and again flowers hanging down this one is the largest one so let's just have a look at the detail in here we have another large building with a castle turret type building there We've got some really big toadstools and a little wishing well in the middle. There's a tree house as well. And I really like on this hill where the toadstools are, we've got a tiny hidden door and window just showing a little dwelling there. And then underneath, there's more going on. There always is. It seems like these worlds encapsulate lots and lots of things going on that you don't initially see when you first have a look. So underneath the wishing well, we have the bucket of water that goes into this underground cave system. It has a little boat in there as well, moored up. We've got a staircase and some windows here. So you can see that this is where that secret door leads to. So you're going down underground and that's where the well water comes from. We've got a little boat as well that's tied by balloons. And yeah, just a beautiful illustration to start the book on. So fun, so whimsical. And that's exactly the kind of thing that you're gonna be getting all the way throughout the book. 
So here we have a circular floral motif. This is centered on the page with lots of big florals and large spaces for you to practice your blends within. And then on the top, you can see we've got a little village of houses as well. So it isn't just a floral motif. It is also a village that lives upon that. So this could be a little world of its own really. And then we have an elephant looking absolutely beautiful. I can imagine this being colored in a lot of jewel tones and looking very bright and vibrant and obviously you can see he's been held up by all of these balloons. This is a running theme throughout the book, you'll see balloons holding things quite a lot. Again lovely patterns on the balloons for you to colour. So here we've got a bird holding a key in its beak and he's sat on top of this house. So looking at the uh, proportions of the bird in the house, this is either a really, really tiny house or a gigantic bird. I'm going to go with really tiny house. This is going to be a fairy house or something like that. Now, as we move through the book, you will notice that a lot of the illustrations, obviously not this one, but more like this one, have a lot of blank space around them or within them. And that is because I think Johanna has tried to leave you space to add your own stamp to it so whether that's a background you know you could do just a, a simple blended background or a glow coming from the centerpiece or whether you want to use the knowledge that you've gained from how to draw inky wonderlands to draw in your own embellishments you can do that in this book there's a lot of scope for you to do that and it really is put into your hands so that you can decide how to do it so there'll be a lot of really really unique pages from this book i'm really excited to see so okay we've got lots and lots of houses here as you can see there's some trees sprinkled in throughout but yeah just a page of houses so this is a peacock motif. It looks like it's a symmetrical image. So you can see the two peacocks facing each other. We have some cherries on this side and some strawberries on this side. So not completely symmetrical. And there are different flowers and butterflies and things hidden in there. This one's gorgeous. It's a castle on a hill. I love the little steps that lead up to this. It's almost like, well, it could be tree logs cut down or it could be bars of crystal. It could be anything really. It's just up to you. And on the outer ring you can see that this has been left blank again for you to maybe add some flowers in or just a simple blend. If you watch Johanna's video of her going through the book you'll be able to hear about all the background behind the illustrations and the reasons why she's done certain things as she has done them so I really would uh, recommend you watching that because she'll be able to explain it far better than me. So we have another circular motif here and we've got a bicycle filled with flowers. So not only is the basket filled with flowers, but we do also have the wheels made out of florals as well. Again, simple illustration with lots of room for you to do whatever you want. Now this is, well, I was gonna say it was a unicorn, but it's not, it doesn't have the horn. So it's a horse with florals all over and an oriental style house perched on top. Here we have some little houses inside bottles. So normally you get a ship in a bottle, but these are houses in bottles. And let's just have a look at them all individually again. So you can see we've got some flags on this one. Uh, again, with the lantern, it looks very oriental. And this one is a really tall and narrow house. Uh, this one again with the flags and we've got some potted plants with lots of vines hanging down. And the thing I love about this one, not only the shape, but also the stopper as well. It looks very delicate and fancy. So this is a much more detailed double page spread. You can see it's an underwater world. We've got a lighthouse here underwater. We've got the ship in the bottle as well. And lots of little treasures and things that have fallen to the seabed. There's also a massive palace here and lots of fish swimming around, obviously lots of seaweed and coral and things like that. Really nice detail there. This is a robo shark, very steampunk inspired, I think. And sticking with the watery theme, we've got this huge ship that contains a veritable village full of houses. So you can see we've got the front of the ship here. Is it the hull or the stern or something else? Port? Starboard? I never know. To swat up on my nautical terms. So yeah, just lots and lots of little houses, as you've seen previously in the book. It's very much about kind of architecture and, and things like that. It's creating these little worlds. A cart full of sweets and cakes and good stuff. And then here are some of the individual cakes. Just look at these designs. We've got ones with orange slices around them. We have ones with lots of dripping frosting and a cake with donuts all over it. Just yum. 
More houses here. This looks almost like a town though, something you would walk through just looking at the different styles of houses and shops and things like that. So it's up to you what you want to make them. I think this one here must be a tea shop because we've got the little teacups and we've got a teapot on the sign as well. This one looks to be a flower store, so a florist. You can see there's a cart full of flowers outside and some flowers on the roof as well. Here's the cake shop. And this one, it's just got a leaf on the sign, so maybe plants, things like that. Not sure what this one is. Again, lots of plants and florals. Maybe it's a whole florist's row. And then this one here has a bottle on it and lots of bottles in the window as well. I think Johanna said on her video that it was meant to be an apothecary, so that's what that one is. There's a cute little cat silhouetted in the window as well. Again, lots of scope for you to do skies and whatever else you could make this on a, on a planet, you know, so you could make this whole bottom section the planet itself. So they're sitting on top of a planet and then the background could be galaxy, you could do anything you like. So this one's really cute. It is a windmill. And as you can see, we have a ladder down into the underwater world below. And it's like it's encapsulated in a little glass or a cup. And we've got a stingray in there, or is it a manta ray, something else? I never know the difference between uh, lots of fish and coral. And then this one was the one that was on the print. So let me just grab that again. As you can see, this is the same illustration that was on that print. And it's a boat which looks like it has train carriages on it because they all have curtains. And uh, it's probably not. It's probably something completely different. But that's how it looks to me. And again, lots of buildings. And I really like the fact that this is its own encapsulated world. Is it floating along? Is it, you know, are you going to do a whole background where it's embedded into other kinds of dwellings similar to this? I don't know. It's totally up to you. And I... I can't wait to see the finished pages from this. I think it's going to be completely unlike anything we've seen before because there is just so much scope for adding to it and different imaginations going to work on this. So this is a page full of fruits and vegetables. We've got pineapples and broccoli and um, watermelon wedges and pears. There's a watering can down here and some garden tools. And then here are some vines with lemons on them and little lemon flowers, I'm assuming. So this is like a little country garden spread. That's how I'm seeing it. Now, this one here you may have seen before because Johanna released a free colouring book, which was downloadable, called Flourish. And this was the page that I coloured from Flourish. I think I did a couple of pages, actually, but this is one I remember doing very distinctly. I love bees. Uh, so it was one that I went to straight away and I just love how it's all encrusted with flowers and basically made up of flowers. Um, yeah, so it's gorgeous. As you can see, this is the one that I have coloured with those castle art pencils. Had a ball colouring this one. I don't know why this particular illustration jumped out at me as being the first one that I wanted to colour. Again, I do like things that are contained within borders. There's just something about it being this contained little world that I like, which is basically the whole book. So you can see that we've got a beautiful cottage here. There's washing on the line and it's just a beautiful snapshot of a little world. So yeah, coloured it with the Castle Art pencils. It's quite different to my usual colouring. Uh, the sky is really saturated and looks quite similar to what I normally do. But as for the cottage itself, I tended to use a very light hand and stay away from trying to burnish, which is what I always seem to do in my colouring. As with the sky, it's really burnished. There's hardly anything showing through underneath, no tooth of the paper. But I actually kept the tooth of the paper within the cottage because I don't know, I just like the effect that it gave and it was also very easy to achieve with those harder castle art pencils. And uh, yeah, I really, really like it. It's more delicate than anything I usually do. And the clouds put in afterwards with my Derwent battery operated eraser. So I did the background and then I just erased some areas for clouds. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that one. As you can see, I didn't follow Johanna's advice and I didn't put a piece of paper underneath the back of the page. So now I have some imprinted ink on the back. But that's totally fine because I can just get an eraser and rub it off really easily. So just listen to Joanna. I always forget to do things like that. I dive straight in and before I know it, I've ended up making imprints. So this is like a, a ribbon almost. It's an underwater theme again. We've got jellyfish in here and there's an anchor and starfish. Lots and lots of seaweed, flotsam and jetsam. 
this is gorgeous as well and again you can see I've printed more ink onto this I really should have gone through it and rubbed it out before the review uh, but this is gorgeous this is another contained image and it's a wigwam you can see there are lots of lanterns hanging down I really really like how flowers have been wrapped around the top of the stalks of the wigwam here and it's just beautiful I don't think you can beat Joanna for this kind of simple beauty it is just lovely this is I think it looks like one of those sweet things you know where you would turn it and then a sweet would pop out of the bottom but instead of that we have flowers and butterflies and its own little botanical world in there so you can see that we do have the twisty thing down here for you to twist there's nowhere to put a coin in so I guess it's just take one when you need one when you need a little cheering up so you twist it and then a little bloom will come out of the door at the bottom here we have a bed that's tied to a star ready to whisk you off into the night and here we have a hot air balloon that's carrying a ship and floating through the night we've got another ribbon kind of illustration here this is a little plane and you can see that the trails from the plane is this gorgeous pattern work this is another page that you might recognize from that book flourish it's the four birds just encapsulated into their different worlds here. I've seen these done as spring, summer, autumn, winter and different palettes like that. So it's nice and fun. And here we've got some little houses that are growing on the stalks of flowers. This is another floating island. And as you can see, it's more of a tropical island. We've got palm trees and coconuts on the top. There's a giraffe here and some flying fish. We've got a duck in the pond and then underneath underground we've got another little house so you can see it's entered here by the door and there's lots of windows going up and I guess the flying fish are the delivery service they'll come and drop you off and pick you up and there's also a little I don't know whether these are apples or what they are but they're growing on a vine right around the island it's just all the detail here is really beautiful we've got a couple of flamingos that have these castle like structures on the back very palatial We've got an owl here that reminds me of one that I think was in Enchanted Forest and it's sitting on top of this house. So again, is it a small house or a massive owl? It's up to you to decide. And then this is very reminiscent of, again, Enchanted Forest. I don't know why I keep getting those vibes here, but you can see we've got this huge tree that has all of these tiny weeny little houses on the different branches and it's also made up of houses as well so it's almost like the house was built first and then the tree grew out of it so this is another one from flourish it is the toadstool encrusted in flowers with a cute little snail on top there and then we've got a couple of little motifs this might have been in flourish as well i can't remember i know there was something like this and we've got a circus tent we've got potion bottles we've got a snail carrying all these flowers ship in a bottle and just these tiny little bits of colouring that you could do when you don't have time to colour a whole page or you just want to get a little bit of digital distraction done during the day. That was a lot of D's, digital distraction during the day. Um, so this is again just another capsule drawing. You've got more of those kind of palace looking structures here and huge fish. So whether this is an underwater scene where the, the palaces are underwater and the, the fish are just massive or whether you want to make these into helium balloons that are tied to the tops of these buildings. You know, there's all sorts of things you can decide to do. Uh, I have seen this one before. I believe Johanna coloured it on a live or, or on a video. It's another half and half world. So there's a lot going on on the top. And then under the surface, we've also got lots to look at as well. Little buildings and the ship here carrying some bottles and jars. So this is for those detail lovers, I think. There is an awful lot of detail here, lots and lots and lots of things to look at. So this could probably take ages just trying to scour through and see what's inside, but let's see what I can pick out immediately. So we've got a tree swing down here and a little hidden rabbit, which wasn't apparent to me on first glance. There's another wigwam and a lantern. And then on this side, we've got a big castle and underground, it looks as though it's a little port. So we've got a ship docking here and delivering some materials. I love these little stars that are hanging down. These could be little star lanterns. So this whole cave could be really dark with the glowing lanterns. There's a key on the side as well. And we've got some crystals here. There's just so much going on. It's incredible. 
So these are a couple of pattern pages. You can see this one's more circular with the board around it. And then you've got some square sort of individual little posy boxes. Here we've got a swan, very, very decorative. And in the background, it almost looks like it could be a stained glass window, this one, or a piece of stained glass. So another interesting one to colour. There's lots and lots of sections that you could colour individually as different stained glass colours. So maybe that's what I'll do with that one. Here we've got a moth or, well, is it a moth or a butterfly? It could be either, I guess. It looks more like a moth, though, to me. And it seems as though it's night time with the stars all around. So here's another circular motif full of strawberry flowers. There's a couple of little ladybirds in there. Really cute. And then we've got a cat. So he is full of florals and leaves. And I love how this vine just goes up through his tail. He's looking very pleased with himself. The cat that got the cream, I think. Now we've got a fish that's towing a bottle. And as you can see, there are little houses inside made out of toadstools. And there's a lot of pattern going on as well. I really like how the pattern has been bordered as these bands at the top and the bottom. It looks like an illustrated, is it an illustrated? Illuminated manuscript. There are a couple of very similar things in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. And that's kind of what it reminds me of. So we've got some more treats. We've got jelly and fruit and sweets and ice cream. And then another, this looks like a VW camper van that's been converted into a dessert cart. So we've got flowers as well, obviously. And then there's a cat sat on top of the, the top of the hammock there. So yeah, really, really fun pages. So here we've got some houses that are set on top of this floral semicircle. And then a spherical motif here with some room inside for you to fill in with whatever it is you wish whether it's to leave it blank or to put some drawings in there, it's up to you. We've got a couple more houses in different styles. I really like these mailboxes and just the little details that go into this. Then we have a house with balloons tied to the top. So again, as I told you, it's a theme for the balloons to be floating things around in this book. And obviously it's night time. We've got some stars and the clouds. So can't wait to see how people tackle that one. Here's a camel with what looks like a circus on his back. And I really like the Eastern vibe that we're getting in this book as well with all of these beautiful turrets. So you can see we've got lines of stars up here on the top. And then at the bottom, there's all of these leaves. So have the houses grown and sprouted from the ground. That's how it looks to me. Here we've got a double decker bus, very popular in the UK. And there's a whole house and forest on the top of the double decker bus and lots of overgrown plants and things sticking out of the windows downstairs. Here we've got some tickets presumably to get onto the bus and the tickets have been coloured by Joanna on her live daily colouring streams on Facebook so if you want to have a look at how she's coloured them go and have a look on her Facebook page. Uh, yeah lots of different designs we've got the camel we've got a Russian doll is it a Matryoshka doll something like that um, and ships and all that kind of thing it's really sweet. Then we've got a row of toadstool houses and a little capsule image again of a nighttime scene now with what looks like the circus tent with lights all around it and lots of things going on underground as well. It's got that overground underground feel. So this is a castle in a tree and there are lots of turrets within the branches of the tree as well. Coming down here right to the bottom this is how you would enter and there's a little secret stairway here as well. Here's an underwater scene with some beautiful boats on the top and it looks as though they are putting the cage down to try and catch some fish. And of course you've got the palaces and things underneath water as well. This looks like a little island that's just sprouted up from the sea and has several different dwellings on there as well. Here we've got a ship that is floating in a bowl on top of what looks like a tree stump. So interesting. <laughs> so this is like a really shallow fish bowl with this huge ship inside sat on the tree stump outside. So I'm, I'm thinking why, but then I'm also thinking why not? On this side, we've got some industrial looking buildings. And then I believe we're on to the last page, which was also featured in Flourish. It's a pattern page full of butterflies, rainbows, stars and flowers. And it's just a really nice ending to the book. Here's the colour palette test page and then the back of it as well for you to practice on. Different medias, paints, markers, anything like that. And then the back, as you can see, also has that French flap 
with the same pattern from the front and there we go so worlds of wonder is released on the 30th of march in the us and the 1st of april in the uk don't forget that the us edition has the purple circle on the front and the spell of colouring without the U, just in case you want to know which copy you're buying. So I would love to know what you think about this book. Um, I say it every time, every time Johanna brings a new book out, it's the best one, but I genuinely think that this is my favourite one because there's, even though there's still lots and lots of florals and it's definitely Johanna's work, you can tell at a glance, there's also a lot more going on in this one. It's not just flowers and plants and, and gardens and little nature bits and things like that, which is all beautiful, don't get me wrong. But with Worlds of Wonder, it seems to me like Johanna has looked at the last book she released, which was How to Draw Inky Wonderlands, and really expanded on everything that she taught us in that book and left us a lot of room to add in our own decorations and our own drawings and doodles. So yeah, for me, it is my favourite so far of Johanna's. Can't wait to see what she comes up with next. So leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you. Don't forget to check the description box for the links to pre-order Worlds of Wonder wherever you are. And I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.